In the past 10 years, mutual funds have really grown in popularity. To put popularity numbers, the industry AUM, which was almost 6 lakh crores in 2011, has now grown by 5 times and has now crossed 31 lakh crores. But in spite of this growing popularity, there are many misconceptions which make people stay away from mutual funds. In this big news video, we shall examine some of these misbeliefs and fabrications as we look to give you the real picture and make you more confident about investing in this essential financial product. For some reason, many people believe that mutual funds are only for people who have a solid understanding of the financial markets. However, in reality, mutual funds have actually been created for the non-expert or for people who either don't understand finance or cannot afford the time or efforts required to research about companies, bonds, industries, etc. And this is where a mutual fund comes in and gives your money access to the services of professional fund management teams that does all the research and also trades in the financial markets on your behalf. So no, mutual funds are not for experts only and is the perfect tool for beginners to participate in India's growth. When people say mutual funds, they are almost always referring to investing in the Indian stock markets or in a more formal context, they are referring to equity mutual funds. However, equity mutual funds are just one part of the mutual fund industry and there is quite a large non-equity category where almost 50% of the industry's 31 lakh crores is invested. In other words, mutual funds allow investors to participate not only in the equity markets but also in the fixed income market. This comes in the form of many debt fund offerings that invest in government securities, corporate bonds, treasury bills, fixed deposits and many other fixed income instruments. In fact, when we looked at the ET Money user data for the purpose of creating this video, we found that a little over 25% of the money invested by investors through our platform was in debt funds. And it's not just debt, one can use mutual funds to invest in gold, commodities, real estate and maybe even cryptocurrency in the future which shows how versatile mutual funds are in terms of investing options. So to put this together, while it's true that the equity category is the most advertised and talked about one, the mutual fund industry also offers many alternative investing options. Mutual funds are an excellent investment option for long-term goals, but there is no reason to not use mutual funds for your short-term goals as well. After all, many individuals and especially corporates use debt mutual funds for very short duration investing, which ranges from one month to even as low as one day. So as a general rule, if you have a short term goal of say less than three years, then opt for a debt or hybrid mutual fund. But if you have longer goals of three, five, 10 or more years, then invest via an equity mutual fund. But the fact remains that mutual funds can be used for short, medium and long term investment goals. The universal rule is all mutual funds carry some amount of risk, but not all funds are risky. I'll say it again. All mutual funds carry some amount of risk, but not all funds are risky. Now, what do we mean by this? If we go with the classical definition of capital guarantee, then no, no mutual fund can guarantee that your principal is 100% protected from a loss. And that's because the money you invest in mutual funds gets invested in the financial markets where prices go up and down every second. The risk you take largely depends on the type of mutual funds you invest into. For example, overnight and liquid funds carry a very small amount of risk. However, equity and especially small cap and sectoral funds have a much higher amount of risk. A wonderful way for beginners to know the risk of any mutual fund scheme is to look at the riskometer which is available on every scheme page on the ET Money app and website. This will give you a better idea of what you are investing into. Many people start with a misconception or in many cases are sold the idea 
that all mutual funds offer a return of 12 to 15 percent. Worse, in some cases, people have the notion that these are fixed returns. Neither of these points is true. And while mutual funds have the potential to do a lot better than fixed deposits over a longer duration, but under no circumstance can a mutual fund guarantee a performance of any kind, whether the fund is an equity fund or a debt fund. In reality, mutual fund returns are quite volatile and depend on multiple factors like the schemes you invest into, the tenure of your investments and the stock market conditions. For example, small cap funds in 2020 had a great run and delivered annual returns of over 80%. However, in 2018 and 2019, the same small cap funds delivered negative returns. But then in 2017, small caps enjoyed a wonderful period of growth and delivered 57% returns. So in the last four years, small caps have swung massively in performance. But if you keep a longer perspective of say 10 years, then probably one can get a better idea of future expectations as you can see in this table. But remember, these numbers can change quite dramatically as we saw with small caps. So do use these only as a guiding beacon and please ignore any talk of mutual funds guaranteeing 12 to 15% returns. That is just not going to happen. It is often believed that mutual fund investments can be done only in the lump sum mode, which is another way of saying that small time investors cannot invest in mutual funds. This is far away from the truth and mutual funds are perhaps the only financial instrument that allow investing with amounts as low as 100 rupees. This is best done using the systematic investment plan or the SIP route, which allows you to invest a fixed amount of money periodically in a mutual fund of your choice. And then as your income improves, you can invest more money by starting another SIP or investing via the lump sum mode. This is something we hear often and we find it a little difficult to mystify this assumption purely because of our own ingrained principle that a lower price is better than a higher price. Now this rule that is lower price is better than higher might work in many circumstances but it doesn't really matter in mutual fund investing. Let's understand this with an example. So we have two funds here fund A and fund B. Fund A is a new fund and is available at an NAV of 10 rupees, while Fund B is an existing fund and comes at an NAV of 20 rupees. Now say over the next one year, the stocks selected by Fund A results in its NAV growing by 40% to 14 rupees. And on the other hand, Fund B, which invested in a different set of stocks, grew its NAV to 30 rupees, which comes to a 50% growth. This means fund B, which was available at a higher NAV, grew more than fund A, which was available at a lower NAV, which shows that performance in mutual funds is not a function of the NAV at which you buy, but it is a function of the time and the stocks that the fund selects as a part of its portfolio. And this is one reason why we generally advise investors to skip the NFO period and buy funds only after examining the portfolio historical performance and the risk metrics of any fund. Since 2003, mutual fund companies have been offering two variants of every scheme, a direct plan and a regular plan. A direct plan is one which retains all the characteristics of the regular plan, but comes with one big advantage, which is it does not include any distributor commission. And as a result, direct plans display a higher NAV as compared to regular plans. Unfortunately, unscrupulous distributors often twist this advantage to serve their own interests and project direct plans as an expensive plan, but that's not really the truth. For example, let's say fund A, the regular plan comes at an NAV of 50 rupees and fund B, the direct plan comes at 55 rupees. In terms of fund growth, fund A will grow slower than fund B because a part of fund A's returns goes to the distributor as a commission. 
So say fund A returns 10% per annum while fund B delivers 10.75% per annum. This differential of 0.75% is the distributor's commission. Now over 10 years we see that fund A's NAV would have grown to 129 rupees while fund B's NAV would have grown to 152 rupees. More importantly, fund A would have delivered an absolute growth of 159% while fund B, the direct plan, would have delivered a higher growth of 177%. This shows that direct plans are more ideal for investors as compared to regular plans, which is why ET Money only offers direct plans on our platform. Chasing performance is a favorite pastime of mutual fund investors. What I mean by that is that many mutual fund investors believe that funds that have performed well in the past are likely to continue their good performance in the future. However, the studies we have done at ET Money shows that this is most definitely not the case. And there is quite a good probability that last year's top performing funds might end up giving a below average return in the very next year. In fact, if you haven't watched our video on chasing mutual fund performance, then please do so. It's a very revealing study and I'll attach a link to that in the description below. Now the question is, if you should not chase previous year's best performers, then what can you do? Well, there are three approaches here. One, you can invest in an index fund and then you need not be bothered about having selected a potentially poor performing fund. Two, you can change your fund selection criteria and lay more emphasis on the fund manager's investing style or portfolio rather than just looking at past returns. Or three, you can use ET Money's ranking and rating feature, which is developed from an in-house algorithm, which is based on performance, risk, consistency, and a few more variables, which help you tell where a particular fund stands. So do try any of these approaches and definitely avoid blindly banking on previous year's winners for understanding the future performance expectations. Absolutely not. Mutual funds need very little documentation. In fact, if you are already KYC verified, that is know your customer verified, then one can start investing on the ET Money app right away. Just enter your PAN number and our platform will verify your details from the central KYC verification agencies within the next five seconds. Now, if you're not previously KYC verified, then all you need to do is to upload your identity document, address, proof, and a few minor documents and our platform will do the rest. Further, everything can be done without you having to go somewhere and from the comfort of your own house. So no, mutual funds definitely do not require lots of documentation to get started. And with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope this video has given you some important nuggets of information. And if you think this might be helpful for someone else, then do share it over Facebook and WhatsApp so that it reaches more people. And if you have any questions for us, please feel free to type in in the comments box below. Thank you for watching and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully.